my name is Chloe. I'm a makeup artist and I'm gonna be showing you my soft glam makeup look. A look like this is great for every day. You can do it for a night out as well, but it's great because anyone can do it. So the palette I'm gonna be using today is the Tarte Tartlet Palette. This is a great palette because it's an all matte eyeshadow palette. With looks like this, you do wanna focus on matte shadows because you're gonna get that depth of color that you're looking for. Shimmer is always great, but with this, you really wanna think of contouring. So when you contour your face, think of contouring your eyes. So my eyelids are already prepped and primed with eyeshadow primer. You can also use a concealer if you like, if you have discoloration on your lids. I'm gonna start by going in with a soft beige color. Think like a light beige tone. And I'm just gonna apply this all over the lid. If you find it's hard to blend eyeshadows, applying a soft skin tone base will help your shadows blend a lot easier, but also help color correct the lids at the same time. So to start the look, I'm gonna be going in with a light, brown tone, and this is where I'm gonna to start to shape the eyeshadow look. So with this, I'm gonna think of it as the transition shade. So I'm gonna start in this outer corner, I'm gonna bring it in, and you're gonna bring it actually to where the bridge of the nose is. So you're kind of creating an illusion. Think of a half circle. Because my eyelids are a little bit more deep set, I like to pull the shadow up further, just so you can see it when I open my eyes. So I like to build the color. One of my biggest tricks with eyeshadow is you want to start from lightest to darkest. It's always easier to add more than it is to take away. So you can see the difference. This one has a slight contour. This one's got nothing. So you want to do it on the same other side. So I'm using a fluffy brush for this first step because I still want the transition shade to be very soft where when we add darker colors, we're gonna go in with more precise brushes just because it's gonna add that extra depth where we need it. Where transition shade is just gonna buff it out a little bit more. And then with my brush, I'm just gonna buff the edges. So now that we've got that initial cut of the crease down, I'm gonna go in with a more precise brush. So continuing on, I'm gonna go in with a darker brown shade, again, a matte shade, and I'm gonna use this to start to darken up that crease we created. So I'm not gonna pull it up that much further just because I wanna create more of a shadow. Think of it like a gradient. So this look is a really great take on the trending cut crease look that a lot of people are doing with glitter and shimmer. So you can still achieve that eye-opening look without having to commit to tons of color, maybe something you don't feel comfortable with. This is still gonna open up the eyes really beautifully. I'm gonna go in with my original shadow brush and I'm just gonna clean off the excess product a little bit. I'm gonna use this just to buff underneath a little bit, just to soften. So you may be thinking, Chloe, we're losing the cut. Trust me, it's gonna come back. I like to build up the color where I need it, and then when I'm done, I go in and I'll show you my trick. So I wanna go in with the shade Dreamer, which is a darker shade in the palette. And you don't want to tap your brush on your mirror and things like that, because if you do that, you're actually gonna damage your brush over time, so you can tap it onto your wrist softly or onto a tissue, and your brushes will last you a lot longer. Again, this darker shade, I'm just etching in. I'm gonna take that clean blending brush once again. And because this is kind of contouring the eye, I'm actually gonna blend that shadow down into my nose, just so it's more seamless. So now that we've got that initial part done, I'm gonna go in and bring the shadow cut back. So again, with that first shade we were using, I'm gonna actually take a smaller brush and I'm gonna start to pack it on. So instead of buffing this out, packing it's gonna keep the color right where I want it. So if I look already, you can see the cut. A great tip if you have issue finding where you wanna place it, look forward as you're applying as opposed to pulling the mirror down. You're gonna get a better idea of how your eyes gonna look when you open up your eyes. I'm gonna go back with my brush and just soften the edge. Just so it's not super, super stark. But see how it opens up this one eye versus this one? Kind of creates an illusion that my eyelid's a lot bigger. So now that I've cut that initial crease, I'm gonna start to darken out the outer corner. So taking that brush, I'm gonna go in with the second darkest shade we used. And I'm gonna start to focus it on the outer V of the eye. So adding depth in this outer corner is gonna add a slight smokiness without having to commit to very dark smoky eyes. It's gonna add a little bit of a contour, just right there. 
a good trick if you find blending eyeshadow to be a little difficult, say you're blending darker shades, you're like, oh, it's getting muddy, what am I supposed to do? Always have a clean blending brush on hand. It's one of my best tricks. It's gonna help blend the shadow and you're not adding more pigment. So you're not gonna have to worry about shadows getting too dark where you don't want them to be. Even keeping like something like a towel where you can dust off excess product or even something like a color switch, which is a little disc where you run your brush through it and then it's gonna take off the excess pigment. So I'm gonna start to deepen up the darker outer corner. Again with the third darkest shade we used previously. And I'm not gonna bring it in as much as I'm doing the other one just cause I wanna keep the depth right where I want it. And next I'm gonna take a black shade, which sounds really scary, don't worry. Black can be used as a deepening shade. I know when people look at palettes that have black shadows in it, they're like, I'm never gonna use this color. But think of it something to add a little bit more depth without having to go into a different color, say maybe it's not right undertone. So I'm gonna take a tiny bit of black, not a lot at all. And I'm just gonna keep this closer to my lash line just to add a faint smokiness. Nothing too crazy. So again, think of it as a deepening shade, not necessarily a color that you have to fully commit to. I'm just gonna blend this out further with a different brush. And then to pull a little bit more brightness back in, I'm gonna go into the first shade we went with and just highlight a little bit more, just so I don't lose that bright pop. So to add a little bit color to the bottom lash, I'm gonna go with that second shade, which is the lightest brown. And I'm taking a small precise brush and I'm just going under and adding a little bit of color just to smoke it out further. And I'm just running this along my lower lash line, not going fully into the inner corner. And then I'm gonna go with that second brown shade and just keep this on the outer corner. And then I'm gonna go with that first bright shade. And I'm just gonna pull it under a little bit, about a third of the way, just to add that brightness right back into the inner corner help open up the eyes and make us look a little bit more awake. So now that I've got my initial shadow on, I'm gonna do a slight bit of eyeliner. Nothing too crazy, I'm not gonna go with the liquid, but I am gonna use a soft pencil. And doing this is gonna add a little extra depth to the lash line before I put lashes on. So what I like to do is I like to apply the liner right at the lash line, and then I take an eyeliner brush and I just slightly smudge it out. Give a little bit of a smokiness. So I'll take it about halfway through. Because my liner brush is a little bit more dense, I'm gonna keep that color I want right at the lash line, but just smoke out the tops. So now that I've got my liner applied on this side, I'm gonna replicate on the other side. So again, I'm not gonna take it all the way across my eyelid. A big tip when working with pencil liners is to do one eye at a time. If you apply it on both sides and try to blend both at the same time, it's gonna set way too fast and you're gonna be stuck. So just do one side at a time, and then you'll have it a lot easier. Okay, so now that my liner is applied, I'm gonna curl my lashes and apply mascara, and, and then we'll get into fake lashes. A big tip for when applying false lashes is to always curl your lashes first. I call this a safety net for the lashes, they're not gonna fall, and also having that mascara before you apply the lashes is gonna get a better blend, and your lashes are gonna last you longer. I'm just gonna be applying a little bit of the mascara. When applying the mascara to get a little bit more volume, be sure to wiggle the brush at the root. Think of it as teasing your hair. That's with mascara versus no mascara. Like such a difference. So if you notice that you may have gotten a little bit of mascara on the lid, everyone does it, it's a thing. Don't wipe it away just yet. You wanna wait until the mascara is fully set and it's just gonna flake right off. If you go at it when it's still wet, you're gonna smudge it everywhere and ruin your eyeshadow. So wait a minute. Take time, work on something else on your face, and then flake off the mascara. So now that the mascara has been removed safely, we're all good, I'm gonna get into lashes. I know lashes are one of the most intimidating things in a makeup routine for people. I always get asked, Chloe, how do you put your lashes on? And it's easier than you think. So since we did already curl our lashes and apply mascara, I'm gonna get our lashes prepped. So the lashes are already trimmed to fit my eye. That is my first biggest tip, is to trim them to fit your eye. Because if you have them too long, they're hanging off, they're gonna make your eyes look like they're a little drooping, a little closed, and it's not gonna feel comfortable. So you wanna trim them so they're gonna fit comfortably on the eye and add actually a lift. So what you wanna do before you apply the lashes is to give it a curl in your hands, because if you apply it directly from the container, it's going to not sit right. No one's eyes are shaped like those lash containers. So giving it a bit of a bend is gonna make it easier for application. 
And for glue, I like to use something that has a brush tip applicator. I know those squeezy tubes are really great, but if you're a beginner, this is something that I really recommend because you're gonna get the appropriate amount of glue. So this container has a brush tip, so you can easily paint it onto the lash. So when you have an old pair of lashes, so you've worn them a couple times, I love it. This is gross, but it has a little bit of glue already and I find it's easier to build up glue. So when you first get new lashes, sometimes it might be hard to apply, but the second time it's always the easiest. But what I'm gonna do is apply a layer onto the lash band. You still wanna have a good amount, but you don't want it to be way too much. And then I'm gonna actually put a little bit extra on the inner and outer corner. Cause all of us have the issue, it's always popping off like so, but wait, you don't want to put them on yet. I know your first instinct is to take your lash and apply it right on, you gotta wait. I like to wave it around, do a little dance, easy peasy, but you want to get the glue to be tacky. If you're applying the lashes when the glue is wet, you're gonna get lash glue all over your eyes, you're gonna ruin your eyeshadow, you're gonna glue your eyes shut. So you wanna wait till it's tacky, and a great way to tell if it's ready to go is you're gonna take the two ends and push them together and if they start to stick a little bit more, they're going to be ready to go. So with these, it's not quite ready. We're gonna wait another 10 seconds and then we'll apply them. See, this is the perfect consistency. You're gonna pull it and it's like slightly sticking. So some people will apply these with tweezers, lash applicators. I personally like my fingers. I find I can get in there a little bit easier. And the way you position your mirror is gonna be game changer. So the way you wanna do it, I like to hold my mirror slightly down. Some people put it higher up, but I find because of my eye shape, looking down gives me more precise application. So what you wanna do, anchor the center first, and then you're gonna take the sides Get them as close to the lash line as possible. Don't be afraid to get your mirror all up in your face. And because the glue is still slightly tacky, I like to go in and wiggle it closer to the lash line. So it's still gonna stay, but you have more control. So while it's still drying, I like to take it and push it up. Like that. So now I'm gonna do it on the other eye. Easy peasy. Now to finish off my soft glam look, we're gonna go in with a beautiful nude lipstick. I'm gonna slightly overline my lips for symmetry and show you how to do it. I'm gonna be taking a Makeup Forever Artist Pencil. This is good for brows, cheeks, lips, everything. That's a great thing about these products. And I'm actually gonna take it from the outer corner and I'm not gonna draw down, I'm gonna draw up. So when you draw down, you're gonna not get the volume you want. We're just going upwards and you can do it in short strokes. You don't wanna go all at once sometimes you're overshooting it. And this is a nude pencil as opposed to something that's a little bit more colorful. That being said, if you're doing a colorful look, go for it. But you can even do this for days where you just want a gloss for slight plump in your pout. So it's it on the other side. And I'm not doing a ton of overlining just because I still want my lips to look a little bit more natural. I feel like with current trends, everyone wants a more plump pout. So something like this is gonna give you a temporary fix. So that's my top, and then we're gonna do the bottom. So I'm just gonna slightly go under my lower lip to create a bit of a shadow. And I'm gonna take it from the inner corners. Again, pulling out as opposed to pulling in, just so I get that beautiful rounded edge. So to add a little bit more definition, think contouring, I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks along the lip to create that fullness. So you're gonna take your lip liner and draw an X. This is gonna create depth right here to create a pillowy effect. Same with right here and then right here. So it's gonna create the illusion of fake cushions within your lips to make it look like you have lip filler even if you don't. And then for my lipstick, I'm gonna be using a nude lipstick from MAC. This is Hug Me. I like the idea of a sheer lip just so it's not so heavy when the eyes are more of a focus, so you can definitely go with something more opaque if you'd like, like so. And that's my soft glam look.